All right, so in this video lesson, we're going to talk about literal equations. You'll learn how to rewrite literal equations, rewrite and use formulas for area, rewrite and use other common formulas. So an equation that has two or more variables is called a literal equation. Uh, another way to think of this is one variable written in terms of other variables. To rewrite a, li a literal equation, solve for one variable in terms of the other variables. So we're going to solve this literal equation. 3y plus 4x equals 9 for y, okay? So uh, the way we do that is we treat all of the other variables that we're not solving for just like a constant, okay? So I look at my variable I'm looking for, which is y. I want to see what's happening to it. First question I want to ask myself is, are there any other terms on this side? There is. There's an x term. Well, I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to move this x term by subtracting 4x on both sides. Now, 9 minus 4x, these are not like terms, okay? So you can either rewrite it as 3y equals 9 minus 4x, or you could rewrite the terms in the opposite order. You could have negative 4x first and the positive 9 second. Now, I'm going to recommend putting your x term first, if you can, because uh, in later chapters, we're going to do something that's called slope-intercept form, and that looks something like this. So having your x term first is going to be a good habit to get yourself into. But for now, you don't need to do that. Anyway, next thing I'm going to do is I want to cancel out this 3 that is being multiplied by y. So to cancel out 3 times y, I need to divide by 3 on both sides. And what dividing on both sides really means is I'm dividing by every single term on both sides. Okay, so this, if I do this, divide by 3. This, this means divide the whole, the whole side by 3. This really means divide each term by 3. And remember, terms are broken up by addition. So I have a 3 here and a 3 here. So this is what I need to do in order to divide both sides by 3. So now these cancel. So I get y equals negative 4 thirds x plus, well, 9 divided by 3 can be simplified. That's three, make sure everything's simplified. So this is one possible answer. The other way you could have had this is the terms rearranged. So y equals three minus four thirds x. This technically would also be a correct answer here. So anyway, that is how to solve for y in terms of x. Solve the literal equation y equals three x plus five xz for x. All right, this one is a bit trickier, uh, but we're gonna use something clever in order to figure this out. So the problem with this is I have a 3x term and then a 5xz term. These are not like terms because they do not have identical variable parts. This one does not have a z, this one does. But they both have an x. And what I can do is I can actually factor out an x and then I can um, solve this. So if you remember, factoring is just the reverse of the distributive property. So I'm basically gonna undistribute this x here. So I can rewrite this as y equals, if I take an x away from each term and put it on the outside, I have x times 3 plus 5z. And you can check for yourself. If you distribute this x here, I get 3x, and then I get 5xz. So that's what I'm doing here. I just, I just rewrote this in factored form. Okay? Now it's going to be pretty easy for me to solve for x in terms of these other variables. So this whole x thing is being multiplied by this, uh, this junk right here, 3 plus 5z. So to cancel out multiplication, I still use division. So what I'm going to do is just divide both sides by 3 plus 5z. Right. Well, now these are going to cancel. So on the right side, I just have x. And on the left side, I have y over 3 plus 5z. And I can't do anything else to simplify this. So now I'm done. We have successfully solved for x in terms of y and z. So we're going to talk about rewriting formulas. A formula shows how one variable is related to one or more other variables. A formula is a type of literal equation. So for this example, the formula for surface area of a rectangular prism is S for surface area equals 2LW plus 2LH plus 2WH. L, W, and H are length, width, and height in this case. And we want to solve for L. So I'm going to use the same trick that I used eventually, but this is really small, so I'm going to rewrite this. And just a reminder, we use the cursive L here because if you use just like a regular L, it might look like a 1. So that's why we use this uh, squiggly L. Anyway, I'm going to do the same thing that the example does, and I'm going to draw my L 
in a different color. I'll use green uh, just for now. So first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of my other terms that don't have an L in it. So I'm going to get rid of this plus 2WH. You could factor first and then get rid of this, but I'm going to get rid of this first. So I'm going to do minus 2WH on both sides. So now I have S minus 2WH, because these are not like terms, equals 2LW plus 2LH. Okay, I didn't put them in green here, but that's okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out an L, aka reverse dis distribute this L. So I'm going to rewrite this as L times 2W plus 2H. And if you want to check, if, you, if I distributed this L, I would get this term and this term. So now I'm just going to bring this left side down, S minus 2WH. And the last thing I'm going to do is I have L times this whole expression. So I'm just going to divide this expression on both sides. So now I'm just going to write my final answer. L equals S minus 2W H over 2W plus 2H. And this fraction cannot be simplified anymore. So we are done. Okay. You own a rectangular lot that is 500 feet deep. It has an area of 100,000 square feet. To pay for a new water system, you are assessed $5.50 per foot of lot frontage. So first we want to find the frontage of our lot, and then we want to figure out how much we are assessed for the new water system. Okay. So here is the frontage, which is just going to be the same as the width, because this is a rectangular lot that's said right here. So first thing we're going to do is solve for W. Okay. So if you remember, the area of a rectangle is just base times height or length times width. Length times width. Okay. Well, I know what the what this is, so I could plug in, but I could use the uh, literal equation first and then plug in after. So that's what I'm going to do. So to solve for W, I'm just going to divide L on both sides. So this turns into W equals area over length. Okay. So now. I'm going to plug in my values. I know my area is 100,000 square feet, and I know my the length here, or the depth that they say, is going to be 500 feet. So this is going to be 100,000 over 500. All right, this is some pretty easy division. I'm going to cross up some zeros. Then I have 1,000 divided by 5. These are zeros, not sixes, by the way. Uh, and that's going to be 200. So my width equals 200 feet. So I'm going to write that here. Now, how much are we assessed for our new water system? Well, we know that we just have to multiply the number of frontage feet that we have, which is we figured out is 200 feet, times the price, which is 550. So I'm just going to do 200 times 5.5. Now, one easy way to do this is I can just move this decimal here and then cross off a zero. I'm basically just multiplying by 10 here, dividing by 10. So I'm going to rewrite this as 55 times 20, which is now super easy to do. Bring down the zero, and then 2 times 5 is 10. And then I get 2 times 5 plus 1 is 11. So. The question is, how much are you assessed for the new water system? You know I like a word answer. We are assessed at $1,100 for our new water system. And now we're done. Here is a uh, list of some common formulas that you might use. So temperature conversion, simple interest, and distance. So right now we're going to solve the temperature formula for F. So a couple things you could do first, and I'm going to tell you which way I think is the best. 
So I have, I want to, I had my, my uh, Celsius equation, and I want to solve for Fahrenheit in terms of Celsius. So you could distribute this and then solve for F, but five ninths and thirty-two aren't going to go all too well. So instead of doing this, I'm going to get rid of this five ninths first and then add 32. So to get rid of this 5 ninths, it's, a, it's multiplying a fraction. So to cancel out multiplying by a fraction, I'm gonna multiply by its reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 5 ninths is 9 fifths. And I have to do that on both sides. So I get 9 fifths C equals, well these are gonna cancel here, just F minus 32. And now all I have to do is just add 32 on both sides, so we get 9 fifths C plus 32 equals F, and this is my Fahrenheit temperature equation in, in terms of Celsius temperature. So we're looking at these two planets, which has a greater surface temperature. We know Mercury has 427 degrees Celsius temperature, and Venus has 864 degrees Fahrenheit. So we just solved that Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths Celsius plus 32. Okay, so all I need to do is just convert one of these temperatures into another one. So I'm going to take mercury here. So F equals 9 fifths times. Now I'm just plug in the Celsius temperature, 427 plus 32. I'm just going to plug this into a calculator really quickly. So I'm just going to do 9 fifths times 427 plus 32. And I get 806. Okay. So this is exactly 806 degrees, sorry, 800.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And I know that that is still less than the Venus surface temperature, which is um, 864 degrees Fahrenheit. So know that Venus has a greater surface temperature. You deposit $5,000 in an account that earns simple interest. After six months, the account earns $162.50 in interest. What is the annual interest rate? All right, so remember, annual means yearly. Okay, and that's what R is. We're looking for R. Okay, and six months, a lot of people might want to plug in six for the amount of time, but this is how many years. This is the time, how many years. So the six months is really only one half of a year. Okay, so now when we plug in, the interest we earned is 162.5. Principal is 5,000. Rate is what we're looking for. And then the amount of time is just one half. Okay, so now I want to solve for this. So I'm going to simplify. And I'm just going to multiply one half times 5,000 because the order of multiplication doesn't matter. So it's 2,500 R equals 162.5. Now to cancel out the multiplication of 2,500 and R, I'm going to divide. Okay, these will cancel. And you could totally do this out if you want, but I'm just going to use my calculator again. So... 162.5 divided by 2,500, and I get 0 0.065. So this is 0 0.065. If you wanted this as a percent, you could just rewrite this as R equals 6.5%, and that would be the interest rate in this case. A truck driver averages 60 miles per hour while delivering freight to a customer. On the return trip, the driver averages 50 miles per hour to, due to construction. The total driving time is 6.6 .6 hours. How long does each trip take? Well, there's all sorts of different ways to do this, but I'm going to just do it one way. So this is going to be a distance, rate, and time question. So we're going to use our equation D equals R T. We're going to look at what we're given, okay? So we are given the rate on the way there. We're given the rate on the way back. And we're given the total time that it's taken to drive, okay? Well, I'm looking for the distance here. But I'm gonna do something clever 
in order to um, help me solve for that. So if you look, I have the total time. I don't have the time of this or the time of this. So there's multiple ways you can do that. Um, one of the ways you can do that is I can basically solve the time it took for here in terms of uh, D and R, and then same thing for here, and then add those up, and that will equal 6.6 .6 hours. So if I divide this by R, I get the time in general is equal to distance over the rate. Okay. So the time for this trip, for trip one, is D over, well, I know my rate. Okay, my rate is 60. Okay, so that's this, this D over 60 is the rate, sorry, the time, excuse me, the time T for trip one. Well, for trip two, it's just gonna be that same exact distance because it takes the same amount of distance to get somewhere and then go back. So it's gonna be the same distance, but this time over the rate on the way back, which is 50. Okay, now if you think about this, this time, plus this time is the total time. And I know the total time, that's 6.6, .6. okay? So now, all I need to do is add these up and solve for D. Well, I do not have a common denominator here, but if you look at this, this is 60 and this is 50. If I ignore the zeros, if I multiply this by five and multiply this by six, I get 5d over 300 plus 6d over 300. That equals 6.6, .6, okay? So now I'm gonna get 11 over 300d. I just combine these two fractions, these like terms, now with a common denominator. And that equals 6.6, .6, okay? And then we know that in order to solve for this variable, I can just multiply by the reciprocal of this fraction. So that's gonna be 300 over 11, over 11, okay. And one thing I'm gonna do just to make my cross canceling easier is I'm going to get rid of this decimal here. So I'm basically multiplying this by 10 and then I'm gonna divide this by 10 by taking a zero away. So now I have 66 times 30 over 11. And the reason I did this is so I can cross cancel 11. If I cross out this 11, I get a one and a six. And then the distance is just gonna be six times 30 over one, which is 180. And that is gonna be my total distance here, which is good. But if you look back up, like I just did, we wanna figure out how long did each trip take, okay? So let's figure out the amount of time each trip took. And we'll go back here to our uh, distance over rate equals time. Because now I have the distance it took to get there. So I'll take this, I'll take my D equals 180, and I'll plug it in to the way there, which is over 60. So this is time there. And then time back would be 180 over 50. So this, the first one's gonna be easy. It took three hours to get there. And then the next one is gonna, we can simplify this. So I can cross out a zero and rewrite this as three and three fifths, okay? Now three fifths, uh, you can go into minutes as a whole number. So this would be the same as, uh, if I multiply this by 12 and 12, this would be three hours, 36 minutes, all right? So on the way there, it took you three hours, and on the way back, it took you three hours and 36 minutes. So if we go back to our question, how long does each t trip take? You, do, you go three hours on the way there, and three hours and 36 minutes on the way back. So now we're done.